Hey guys, it's Shiwa from Gamers Knows Best bringing you a video about my E3 predictions. As GKB has said before, we have done predictions with the Console Corner crew, and he has also given his own thoughts and opinions when it comes to E3. But I wanted to give a little bit of a female side to this, so these are my E3 predictions. Now remember, they are just my thoughts and my opinions and what I would like to see. I am not an insider, and I don't know any. And as always, just keep it fun on wondering what we could see, but never get your expectations too high because you never want to be disappointed. Alright, let's get into this. So, as everyone knows, I have said more than enough times I do not care about hardware, but there is something I would love to see. I do not know if this will happen, but after the Elite Controller had come out with all the specs and easy to use app, the style and the weight that it gives in your hands just make this controller an overall can never go back to anything else. I would love to have an Elite headset. With the app, much like the controller, being able to easily control sounds and games with a switch on the headset itself allowing you to change between different modes, whether you want to just party out with your friends and have your game sounds low, or whether you want to just flip that switch and be able to game out and hear that gameplay loud and clear. Also having a control on the cord allowing you to mute easily than having to use a dongle or, well, Everybody hearing your background noises just kind of sucks sometimes. So I would truly like to see an easy to use mute on the cord. And I think this headset could absolutely rock. Also having the ability to have tags much like the Astro headsets and how you can actually customize and make it a bit more your own. I would love to be able to put my logo on one of those tags on the earphones so that it can be a little more personalized to me. So... For hardware, my E3 prediction would be to love to see an Elite headset. As for the rest of the hardware, I am sure they will show the VR because that has been something that has been much talked about this year. Also with the Slim or the Scorpio, whatever it truly turns out to be, I'm sure it will be talked about. But as it stands, I am more about the games. You can have as much hardware as you possibly want, but without games, the hardware does become useless. Now don't get me wrong, I will buy and support the Xbox no matter what they bring out, as that is what we do. We are gamers, and we do support the brand that we stand for. But I am just not as hyped as most people. I will wait and see what they bring and what they tell us it actually has, what it can actually do. So let's get on to what I do love to talk about, and that's games. Starting off with a few games that were actually mentioned last year at E3, I would actually like to see release dates. We Happy Few was one of those games. We all know that E3 always talks about indie games. There's always a portion that usually gives out release dates, or it just shows what could come. And this is one that I would love to actually see where it is, how it stands, and when it will actually be released. It has that creepy feeling like Bioshock, but has that goofy look like Borderlands. Two great worlds, if you ask me. So I would love to actually see a release date for this game and actually be able to play it. Also, I would like to see a game that could actually become a pretty big multiplayer game. For Honor. A game from Ubisoft that brings Vikings to Knights to summarize. It's a multiplayer that could be fun and exciting to play, taking over and proving who is better out of the world. So for this, I would actually like to see a release date for this game as well. There's always good indies that do come out that people don't talk about. I would actually like to see the release dates. Next, of course I would like to talk about Titanfall 2. This game is actually going to be revealed on June 12th and I'm sure so many are excited. This is my most anticipated shooter. A lot have talked about Call of Duty and of course Battlefield 1, which are both great games, but they don't interest me as much as Titanfall 2 does. This is my most anticipated shooter, as I have just said, and I want to see how this game is going to play out from having giant titans with swords to having 
pilots that can run around. I want to see what it brings, what the campaign is going to actually be more like. After having the years that they have from the first one and hearing the fans of what they've said about it, I would like to know what they have changed. I would like to see customization to where you can actually make your pilot feel like your own or maybe have a different Titan instead of just three. I would love to see bigger maps, bigger party sizes. Halo has definitely brought out the 16 party and I think that that is amazing and I would love to see Titanfall do this where you can actually have larger friends in private matches and everything else like that. I do believe that you'll see Titanfall 2 on Microsoft stage. There has been several things that have kind of brought me to this conclusion. So for my E3 prediction for Titanfall 2, I think that Microsoft has the marketing rights. If you look on the Xbox website and you look at the trailer, they do show their logo and they do show their intro and outro for Xbox. PlayStation does not have this. If you compare it to any games that have had marketing rights between the two companies, Microsoft has, like I said, their intro and their outro on that video, where on other videos that they are not marketing do not have, the, have this on their video. And the same goes for Sony. So just take that into consideration when it comes to the marketing rights, that it could be the possibility Microsoft does have it. Also, it was Xbox that released it the day the first reveal came out. Sony had not posted it yet that day. Just another small thing. But again, this is only my opinion and this is just what I think. But it is my E3 prediction that we will see Titanfall 2 on Microsoft stage to stay true to the fans. Yes, it's coming to Sony, but if Microsoft was smart, they would hold onto the marketing rights to Titanfall 2 to stay true to the fan base, the original fan base, the Titanfall 1. So my next prediction I would like to move on to is the devs for the Order 1886 are supposed to be working on another game. I would love to see something along those lines, but more with the world of werewolves and vampires. I did enjoy watching GKB play the Order 1886. I did not play it. I had started to, but after watching him play it, it didn't bring me back. It didn't give me the reason to go back. It was just a straightforward game. You played it for about eight hours and then it was done. There was no reason to go back. It wasn't as hyped of the werewolves and vampires as I was led to believe. And that was a little disappointing to me. But I would love to see th these devs bring out another style of that game. The darkness was great. I did enjoy that. I just wish it had more. I would also love to see a multiplayer game where you can actually choose races between human and creatures. A campaign that you could actually play and go through more of an open world, just something more. I would enjoy this, probably buy a PlayStation 4 for this if this game was like that. But again, we shall see. Moving on to a couple of games that we pretty much know we're going to see. One being Sea of Thieves. This is one game that I would love everyone to see more of. There has been back and forth about whether or not this is going to be a good game, could be a fun game, or what it truly actually is. I believe it to be an MMO that is a great fun style, fighting on ships, finding treasures, and of course being a pirate. I'm sure everyone has gotten that of it. But I think that some people are missing so much more, and I do hope that there's longer gameplay, or even a longer trailer more introducing this game, possibly a beta release, or who knows, maybe the actual release. So. For my E3 prediction, for when it comes to Sea of Thieves, I would like to see a beta time release where everyone can actually see what this game is true. Of course, now there is ReCore. We are all aware that this is a game that's coming and are extremely excited to see what this game truly is. We have heard different sides from different people of what this game could be, but have not actually seen any true gameplay. So, I would like to see an actual release date for this game. Hopefully, will be this year, 
but there could be the possibility of 2017. After hearing Scalebound being pushed to 2017, there is always that chance that this game could be moved to spring 2017. We will have to wait and see, but it is the possibility. But I would like to see longer gameplay and actually showing everybody what this game truly is, whether it's an open world running around or whether it's just something else. So just a couple of other games that we pretty much know are coming to Microsoft Stage is Gears of War 4. I would like to see maybe a little hint of some campaign just to get a feel for it. I am not a huge Gears of War multiplayer fan. I did play the beta and it, it was okay for me. But again, this is not my style of game. I prefer where I can jump off walls, boost around. I like to fly, what can I say? So, I would like to see some form of campaign. We do, know, we do know that this game is coming out in October, so for what they're going to show at E3, it may be nothing, it could be something. We'll just have to wait and see. And of course, Halo Wars 2. This is a game that I believe a lot will be happy to see, but I would like to see the gameplay and what this game is going to offer. I believe that they're going to release a beta, of course, giving the chance for people to try it out. Hopefully a release date as well would be handy. There's also the chance of possibly a new Elder Scrolls. As everyone knows, that Bethesda leaked an image early on of a whole bunch of their characters standing in a row waiting in front of an arcade game. The first character in that row was an Elder Scrolls character. Could this mean a new Elder Scrolls? I don't know. I personally am not a big fan of Elder Scrolls, but who knows, maybe if there is a new game, it could be the game that pulls me in. I'm always willing to try. The last game that I want to talk about is one that was teased last year. It used to only be an exclusive to Sony, but has been announced that it would be coming to Xbox as well. And that's Kingdom Hearts 3, one of my most anticipated games. It was supposed to be actually released last year, but it didn't come out. Then it was supposed to be released early spring and then it wasn't ever talked about again. So I would actually like to see some gameplay and an actual full release date that they're going to stick to. And that is the end of all of my games for E3. So before I end this, one of my predictions was about Cortana and being able to be used through the headset without having a connect. This feature actually was released on Xbox One today to preview members. It is coming in waves, so make sure you watch for that. So in a way, I guess that prediction came true, which is pretty cool. And again, you do have to register for the latest update. You have to go into your dashboard and you do have to actually go to register and click on latest if you want these new changes. I believe I'm still pending, but that's okay. Hopefully I get it soon and I'll be able to show you all. So I just want to say, with a lot of the leaks that have come out in the past few weeks, it makes it really hard to make predictions, because chances are, we know a good amount of it, so I just have to say, I am really excited more to see the stuff that we don't know, the new IPs that they actually kept hush, the features that we couldn't even think of, just like what they did with backwards compatibility and the Elite controller that they shown us. These are things that I wait for, these are things that I get excited for. And hopefully we get that again this year. So these are just my opinions, my thoughts on E3. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you all keep your expectations in check. And remember, have fun. As always, please like and subscribe. And please leave a comment below. I would love to see what you are looking most forward to to E3. What are your predictions? What are your thoughts? What is the out-of-the-box idea you can think of? I'd love to hear it. So again, game on and have fun.